Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In this short video, I'll cover the basics of optical flow technique for motion detection in image sequences. As the name suggests, this technique will utilize the flow or change in brightness values or optical intensity to track moving objects. A major advantage of this technique, especially over difference motion analysis, is that it can represent three-dimensional motion of objects across a two-dimensional image. Additionally, optical flow methods may easily be configured to track interested moving objects only, while ignoring motion of unimportant objects. An optical flow field may be understood by this simple example. Suppose that the disk in the first image starts rotating in clockwise direction as shown in the second image. Then optical flow field will look like the one shown in this image. The optical flow field generate velocity vectors corresponding to points in the moving object. By analyzing the flow field, we can easily see the direction of motion of the corresponding points and magnitude of velocity as well. We know that a rotating disk will have maximum speed at the outer periphery while reduced speed near the center. And this fact is clearly represented by the optical flow field. Like all other motion analysis techniques, optical flow methods also observe certain assumptions to figure out the motion. The first assumption bounds the change in observed brightness of any object point. As in consecutive frames, brightness value will be tracked. So if the brightness value of the object to be tracked changes more than the supposed threshold, then tracking it will not be possible. This assumption additionally hints towards the time interval that may be used for acquiring successive frames. If the time interval is large, then brightness values may change significantly but if this time interval is quite short, then brightness values will not change between successive images. The other assumption states that the nearby points move in a similar fashion and by nearby points, points having approximately same brightness value and lying in the same object are meant. This assumption once again at another technical requirement of the method. The point whose flow will be tracked must lie close to each other. That is, we must sample the whole image using a high sampling frequency. If samples are lying close to each other, then the second assumption may easily be respected. Suppose that these two images are part of the sequence which is used in motion analysis using optical flow measurements. It is quite difficult to figure out the motion using naked eye and it is because the time interval between both frames is quite small. Optical flow methods work by calculating derivatives in x and y direction and in time direction as well. Partial derivatives in x and y directions are shown here. These images contain information about motion in spatial domain necessary for figuring out direction of motion, while time derivative is necessary for approximation of magnitude of velocity. To keep the difficulty level to beginner, I am skipping the mathematical details to arrive at these flow fields. Using Horn and Shunk method, the shown flow field will be generated that shows motion of the points in these regions. The vectors give direction as well as magnitude of motion of these points. Lucas and Kennedy method generates a much more stable flow field as shown over here. Analysis of flow fields generated through optical flow method can reveal information about the motion. The motion considered over here can be of four different types. In all these types, the camera position remains static. The first type is when the object translates at a constant distance from the observer. For example, this box sliding on the screen. It is translating at a constant distance from you. The second type of motion is when the object moves towards or away from the observer. That is when you are zooming in or out of any object. 
for example zooming out from earth as shown in this animation the third type is when object rotates at a constant distance about the viewing axis for example a disc rotating in front of you as shown in this animation the last one is when the object rotates about the axis perpendicular to the viewing axis as shown in this animation now each type of the motion will be represented by a specific velocity vector the first type of motion that is translation at constant distance will be represented by a set of parallel vectors pointing towards the direction of motion the second type of motion that is zooming in or out on the object will be represented by the set of vectors having common origin but point outwards or inwards depending on zooming in or out the third type of motion that is object rotating about the viewing axis will be represented by arrows circling about an origin as shown over here while the last type of motion that is object rotating perpendicular to the viewing axis will be represented by parallel vectors in opposite direction understanding the type of vectors and the motion they are representing will aid in analyzing the motion of the moving object with this i hope that the observer now have a sound understanding of how optical flow techniques work and what are various considerations associated with them various packages are available in different programming languages that may be used to implement optical flow techniques quite easily